Hey everyone and welcome to the HWBOT World Series. This is the interview of the champion of the HWBOT World Series here in North America. Mark, Mark0053, if I uh, pronounce it correctly. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us. Congratulations on your uh, on you being the champion. And uh, that's good because I know we'll, uh, we'll see you again this year in Germany at the end of the year. <laughs> because you won the golden tickets for the HWBOT World Championship. Um, First, first things first, uh, how was your experience here uh, globally about the World Tour and the World Series? It was a great experience. Uh, I came last year. It was at a different venue. Um, we were a bit isolated from the rest of the, uh, the gamers, so this time we were kind of more integrated. It was kind of nice to see what was going on. Uh, people were stopping by and asking questions, so it was nice to have that interaction uh, between, between everybody. So a really cool venue. I hope it's uh, of similar, uh, something similar next year as well. Well, um, well, these we are actually like in, in the entrance hall, so we people are, have yeah. to stop by <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and um, so, so, speaking of your performance in the in the World Series, so you are the winner, so you are the champion. We are we already know that. Uh, congratulations again. Uh, let's you. talk about the the qualifier, the the process to get the, to the the qualifier. Uh, you had three benchmark, five gigahertz limited on CPU and then core. Um, that was uh, SuperPy, XTU, and 3D Mark 11 Physics. How did you approach this three benchmark in the qualifier? So um, <clears throat> the first thing I did it was to try uh, just just with the CPU pot, no liquid nit nitrogen in it, and just to get a base at maybe 4.5 gigahertz to have an idea of. Uh, you know, work on the efficiency, and w there's already a five gigahertz uh, challenge on HWBot, uh, so I was able to practice a bit on there, try out some tweaks, uh, learn a bit about the memory, see how that impacts the scores as well. So um, when we got here to the qualifiers, those three benchmarks I had work a bit on it uh, with DDR4 and the Z170, so it really helped out a lot. That, that was not your first time with the platform either. You bring no, your, it, own, uh, your own stuff. Uh, what is your experience with the uh, Z170 platform so far? Uh, at first, it was really... Uh, I, I find it was variating a bit. Uh, try to learn DDR4. Uh, it was actually the first time I tried to play with uh, memory. So this last six months or one year, I've been really focusing on memory. It was all new. Uh, lots of memory training. So probably 80% of the time is memory training, trying to figure that out. But once you get a good hang of it, uh, it really helps out. The tweaking of the RAM helps a lot too. Uh, overall, a, a great experience on Skylake. Um, I really enjoy it. I hope the, the next generations are going to be as challenging and uh, as fun. Well, uh, speaking of memory tuning, at the during the final, we saw you like go straight into the BIOS, changing like five settings and then rebooting and that's it. You just change this once. You didn't even try other settings. You know exactly which one you were going for. That's right. Yeah. So uh, there are certain settings that I knew in advance that maybe let's say one out of five, uh, it would give me an error or it wouldn't boot. So I just try to be a bit more conservative this time and go with something that I would be more comfortable. Uh, just have a better feeling that it, it would boot having less problems. And three hours sounds like a lot, but it's uh, when you have one hour per benchmark, it goes by pretty quick. So it's best That's not to good. waste your time on, on memory training. Yeah, indeed. And um, we know that some benchmarks use some special uh, OSs as well. So you had multiple OS for in, like right. one special OS for one benchmark. So um, uh, the question is, did you prepare for this competition up front at home? Or you came oh. here with the, your <laughs> default meaning, uh, main benching gear? So uh, after, I would say, uh, December of last year, I've been spending a, a good 10, 15, 20 hours a week just understanding the benchmarks uh, individually, what operating system works best, uh, and then playing with tweaks. So I had a, a good, under, I had an understanding of which benchmarks I had to be ready for. So, uh, and the, the operating system certainly does a big difference. So. And uh, you had the fortune that some of the uh, previous uh, World Series uh, were streamed, so you can see uh, like the, the format as well. That's right, yeah. So it, that's probably the best thing is was watching uh, other qualifiers from different areas to see what they were facing and going through. So uh, it helps us prepare for sure. Well, that's uh, that's great. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the semifinal that you didn't have because you, you went straight to the qualifier. Uh, do you think this way of uh, you pick a benchmark and you choose uh, which one uh, was the, the fastest one, just go directly to the final? Well, you, you basically smash 
the, the qualifier, you were first in uh, in all three three stages. So f that was quite obvious that you will go directly to the final <laughs> at uh, at that point. Um, the, did you prepare before the uh, the grand final, or you were just waiting for it to to happen? Like while the other guys were benching the semi final, were you actually watching them or testing your system? I was uh, yes, I certainly watch. Uh what was going on when uh, in the semi-finals. I wanted to have an idea of, uh, it, it's hard to say, understand the stress they're under to, uh, or under, but uh, it was nice to see what they, they were facing uh, in 30 minutes. So uh, it was a great experience just watching them uh, live to see what was going on. So it, it did help a lot for me preparing for the finals. So what was your uh, opinion as a spectator point of view? It's, I know they were under a lot of pressure and uh, it's it's quite something, anyways, because you know you're gonna be there at some point. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was great to see them well, live. Inter yeah, in interesting to, uh, to to hear that from you. Um, let's, let's talk about the the grand final against uh, against Tony uh, Raspard. Um, you guys choose uh, Cinebenchure or Eleven Dot Five. Um, why did you don't you uh, veto it? Uh, <clears throat> the Cinebench 11.5, I did practice a little bit. Um, I would say if I really had to veto something, would have been the reference clock. Uh, I never even tried that before. And then it would have been Cinebench because that was the one that I had less experience with. So if I vetoed Cine, uh, there was a chance that we would end up with a reference clock, So, uh, which I wasn't really prepared for. So I just went for it. <laughs> Tony wow. was up for it, so we just... We, well, we you, you guys did great at it, and the first 10 minutes of the uh, of the final, you were like pushing score after score after score. It was actually hard for us to keep up updating the scoreboard <laughs> <laughs> and and doing the commentary as well. It's like, damn, it's like a new score. It's like, damn, a new score. That's and, right. And then for like 15 minutes, you got stuck. Both of you got stuck at pretty much pretty much the same time. You were actually the last one to submit a valid score before you guys get stuck in the yeah. in this. Um, so, so what, what happened? Why, why were you stuck? Do you, do you know why? Or that's something you're still working on? So my very first uh, experience with Skylight was a cold bug that was around minus 110. Um, I wasn't sure if this chip would get it or not, but of course, uh, it just so happened that I, I did get a, a cold bug again this time with this new chip at around 110. Uh, so I was expecting in my head that something similar could happen. So I try to focus uh, and keep the temperatures uh, above 110, minus 110 degrees Celsius. And from there, uh, it really went much better. Well, uh, it, it did actually went uh, much better for you. Uh, did you have a stress at the end when uh, um, Rasprod was like about to submit, just just waiting the last seconds to <laughs> run the, the benchmark? That is very stressful because you never know. This it could be just with the last great score and uh, the one that takes uh, the, the final. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can happen. But when you saw like the benchmark running super slow, you were like, okay, that's good. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, were you like you said? There's like, a lot of pressure and so on. You saw the other guys under pressure. Um, how did you experience this uh, this this final in here in one versus one in front of the of the public in a new format uh, with a benchmark? You maybe don't bench every day either. Um, how was this for you? Like, were you super stressed, or you just took it like stress before and then everything went off once you get yeah. on the stage? Um, so, by watching the other competitions uh, in Brazil, in Europe, uh, it, I've seen what the guys were facing during the semifinals and the finals in the last 30 minutes. Uh, a lot of the guys were taking it slow, starting uh, easily, slower clocks, just building incrementally, try to improve their scores. And I find uh, that works well with my the way that I deal with, uh, with stresses. So, uh, I just use that strategy. Uh, based on what I've seen from other people do. Well, so you guys stress the system and I try to stress you. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, uh, with the format. Well, uh, congratulations, uh, congratulations, Mark. You, uh, by winning the final, you are getting your golden ticket to the HWBOT World Championship in Germany at the end of the year. Uh, are you looking forward, like super excited for it or you don't even believe it yet? I don't believe it yet. Uh, uh, I've never... Um, did anything of that scale before, uh, and competing against uh, the you know some of the top people in the world is certainly stressful. I uh, will have to do a bit of preparation before that, but I'm really looking forward to it and meeting uh, a lot of uh, new faces. 
But still, you're a uh, number one overclocker in Canada. You're in the top 60 worldwide. This is uh, hardly quite an achievement. And now you're yeah, you're showing off that, yes, I can be in that league as well. I, I'm, I'm here <laughs> and you're here to stay. <laughs> Well, that, that, was, uh, that was great to have you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, one last question is, uh, what is your uh, general feeling about the World Tour uh, activities here for this year? Uh, in, in terms of the LAN ETS? In terms of like how it was arranged and how it oh, was, how uh, it was like your experience as a person yeah. coming for the World Tour. So compared to last year, I felt uh, this was a huge improvement. Uh, it feels very professional and we're walking into something that uh, everybody is being challenged uh, in, in, a, in a specific way where uh, there's people dominating for sure, but uh, it, it's just a great, a great feeling this year. I like the strategies that are behind it and uh, HWBot is doing a fantastic job to prepare this and uh, to make it move forward for sure. Well, uh, thank you very much. It's, it's been hard work as well on our side. And we can't wait to be uh, at the, the next one that we'll be doing in Taiwan during the Computex. Uh, and if you guys want all the information, you can find them back on YouTube when we did the announcement, or you can find them on hwbot.org. Thank you very much, Mark. Congratulations thank you. once again on uh, winning the North America thank leg of much. the HBot World Series. <laughs> and thank you guys on the live and, uh, and watching this video replay on YouTube. Uh, without you guys, we would not be able to do all these live streams, so this is always great to have uh, all this uh, all this of you guys commenting on the videos or on the live chat when we are live until next time keep pushing it <laughs>